Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to Legends of Chess 2020. We have a grand final day two. In the day one, Magnus Carlsen managed to win against Jan Nepomniashi. And in if Jan Nepomniashi wants actually um, to win this tournament, he has to first equalize. So today uh, he has a very, very difficult task. He has to equalize against Magnus Carlsen. However, yesterday I show you the game where Jan actually uh, won. Um, after the phenomenal uh, home preparation, he outplay Magnus Carlsen and he actually get the very nice 21 moves, I think, miniature in the Sicilian defense um, in the attack in the system called Freak Attack. Very interesting. If you haven't seen that, check over there. There is the, there is the link. Uh, and now let's see what happened in the first game of day two of the grand final. Magnus Carlsen as white and he opens with d4. Interesting that he said in the interview after the, the game that he wanted to play something very sharp. Uh, however, once over the board, uh, he changed his mind and he said, OK, let's just play solid and see what's going to happen in the first game. We have knight f6 and now knight f3 by Magnus Carlsen. Uh, and now black can play anything like like e6 you know d5 goes for some uh, kind of um, queen's gambit declined uh, but we have g6 so some kind of indian game bishop f4 london system uh, and it's quite interesting not often we see on the board uh, london system uh, played against you know indian uh, king's indian setup we have bishop g7 e3 we have castle by nepo uh, and now bishop e2 d6 pretty standard stuff and now very important important uh, decision by Magnus Carlsen because in the London system before you castle uh, usually it's good to play something like h3 h3 making the retreat spot for the for the bishop because the bishop is actually very often attacked uh, and not everybody wants you know to bring the bishop to h3 exchange it for the knight you know double the pawns uh, and so on so h3 usually indicates the castle however uh, Magnus said, okay, go for my bishop, I castle first. Uh, and now interesting that this is not the main line. It should be the main line. However, knight b to d7, normal development, you know, a c5, b6 with the idea of bringing the bishop on the long diagonal. And there is a reason for that because um, jumping to h5, which Nepo actually played, is not that easy because bishop g5 this is the main line uh, and after h6 bishop h4 g5 this bishop doesn't go to g3 but rather knight f to d2 and this is the the main line here uh, and now i will just show you what black usually plays so g takes on h4 destroying this pawn structure in the front of the king however uh the king can for example move to h8 the the rook can come and you know attack on the on the g5 this is one of the ideas but another idea uh, after bishop h5 is e five uh, and now this pawn is attacked twice so should be supported by by c3 uh, and after h3 g3 knight d7 just nor normal development knight a3 knight f6 with the attack on the bishop this bishop can retreat and stay on this diagonal um, and the position you know it's not so obvious that it's much better you know for for any of side but black definitely has some counterplay for this shattered uh, pawn, pawn structure. So uh, very interesting uh, variation. Uh, however, Nepo wasn't in the mood for, for going for the sh such a sharp lines uh, and he plays knight f6. So he prefers uh, also to go for the solid line. And of course now bishop g3. We have knight c6 by Nepo and here Magnus could go for c4, which is the main line of this sideline. Uh, just, you know, grabbing more space, control the center and um, and so on. However, he prefers knight c3. So something more like, you know, Jobava London, where this, this knight actually works on c3. 
Uh, and now we have e5 attacking the pawn in the center so Magnus exchange uh, knight b3 is the is the main idea here it was played but only one game in the database uh, but Magnus uh, prefers to to exchange so d takes on e5 knight takes on e5 and now f4 so this is his plan uh, you know kick this knight uh, however he creates also um, the weakness on e3 so he has to just you know uh, keep an eye on that we have knight e to g4, now attacking that weakness, and rook f3, defending, rook e8, attacking it again, uh, and now knight f1. So still, Magnus still having the resources, however, his position is more and more cramped um, and more passive. Knight on h5, so uh, Nepo said, okay, finally I can exchange this bishop, but Magnus said, okay, I'm not interested. Uh, I was running with this bishop quite a lot, you know, this bishop went uh, to f4, then here, here, here. So why not, you know, move to e1? This is what Magnus played. He could go for something like h3, and after g takes on f4, e takes on f4, uh, just exchange that and, and, and continue the game this way. However, he was not interested he would weaken the the dark squares in the front of his king uh, and he doesn't have the dark square bishop anymore uh, black also doesn't have you know the 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 very safe position of the king uh, we cannot call it you know the solid shelter here however uh, as i said magnus just retreat with the bishop to e1 uh, and here it's a very interesting part of the game because uh, Nepo for some reason uh, thinks okay I have very active position so I can just attack against Magnus Carlsen what he should play is probably something like g takes on f4 and after e takes on f4 let's say queen f6 uh, bishop d2 trying to defend that um, and after bishop d7 maybe bring the bishop this way and this would this this would be pretty good for black and and the game could continue uh, and if you think, okay, uh, I've just spotted some nice tactic here because, uh, you know, queen can come to d4, I can jump with the knight, maybe some smothered mate, mate or something, uh, it just doesn't work because after knight on f2, the rook can take the knight uh, and this knight is under attack. So that is the problem. This time just it would not work. But congratulations if you just spotted that. So probably uh, bishop d7 would be best and, uh, you know, just, just continue the game this way. However, Nepo felt, okay, I'm in the attacking mood and, uh, and he played f5. And this is actually a very bad move and uh, it opens this diagonal and, you know, usually it's not a big problem. However, here after bishop c4, uh, the king cannot go to the h file because the bishop attacks the, the knight on h5 unprotected, losing peace, and also uh, attacks the rook. So uh, black would simply lose the exchange for nothing, no compensation for that, so the game would be lost. Um, also king f8 and the king stay on the same file with the, with the rook, so it already looks very bad. For example, h3, knight g to f6, and now after exchanging the pawn, Rook f2 uh, and and let's say c6. Bishop can retreat here. Uh, attack this knight. The the knight has nowhere to go. So g4 is actually forced. H takes on g4. F takes on g4. Exchanging the bishops. Uh, and look at this. There are no pawns in the front of the king. Uh, the rook is here. The queen is here. Uh, and this is just unplayable. White would have very very comfortable game here. So Nepo tries something else, bishop e6. Now blocking the bishop, the problem is this bishop is defender of the pawn on f5. Um, and without the bishop, the pawn gonna be undefended. And uh, look at this, bishop e6 by Magnus Carlsen, rook e6, h3 kicking the, the knight. So look at the position, black had so active position and now black has to retreat the pieces. Knight g to f6 and after exchanging, Magnus win his first pawn and also attacks g5 so bishop h6 defending that but now g4 uh, kicking just another piece so knight g7 uh, and now simply rook f3 uh, over protecting e3 we have queen d7 making a space for another rook uh, and now knight g3 
rook a to e8 as planned so a black managed to actually double the rooks on the on the e file and put a lot of pressure on e3 uh, we have bishop f2 defending and now queen c6 by nepo he probably should play c6 c6 very important move uh first it it controls d5 uh, so the knight cannot go to d5 how important is that uh, you will see in the game believe me you will see in the game also d5 is possible uh, and from there the pawn could, could for example um, control e4 so this pawn would become the weakness forever or not maybe not forever but for a very long time however we have queen c6 and what is the idea behind this move because uh, okay queen controls um, e4 the knight controls the rooks controls uh, but magnus could ask okay uh you control that but what you gonna do if i push the pawn and this is what he did uh are you gonna you know sacrifice the exchange and and play this way uh i would be happy about that you know i'm um, exchange up and we can continue the game nepo of course didn't go for that however what to play if black plays something passive like king h7 or, or, or something similar uh, knight d5 as i said very dangerous move attacks the knight twice and the knight cannot take it because this would be very nasty fork so black would just lose the the rook so that's not possible uh, knight d7 avoiding maybe but then rook c3 and whenever the the queen moves then actually white gonna win the exchange so again exchange up uh, what else could be played here uh, maybe defend the knight rook f8 or something like that still knight d5 uh, and now very interesting knight e4 isn't that great because rook f8 so after king f8 uh, queen f3 with check and it looks pretty promising uh, of course the knight cannot go there because it's you know free piece so king e8 uh, and now after knight e4 it looks like everything is okay for black because after queen d5 this knight actually is hanging however the knight can jump to f6 and it's not only winning the exchange um, after that uh, but also winning the bishop and it's no way actually to um, to defend the bishop because if queen e6 which looks pr pretty uh pretty interesting all the pieces actually defending uh rook e1 wins the queen and and the game so this also is not the greatest idea what black could try is actually queen d7 go back with the queen this queen c6 was just bad queen d7 it's not saving the game however it's the only chance and after knight d5 uh, now the main idea is to play c6 for now it's not possible because the knight is under attack uh the knight cannot take the knight the problem is after e takes on d5 uh the rook can come and pick up this bishop this bishop doesn't have any defense okay king h7 uh queen d3 and uh, and in the next move the the bishop gonna fall so um definitely not playable knight e4 is even worse because after knight e4 look at this this is the the most beautiful fork family fork uh, double family fork uh, ever you could see uh, but after knight d5 what could be played is actually knight h7 um, and after bishop d4 uh going on this diagonal white would have very beautiful position to play for example c6 now but now knight can go to e3 jump over there so let's say rook f8 knight e f5 uh, and the white has a really great position but probably that was the best continuation for black and um, and yeah very difficult decision to make uh, however nepo played knight d7 immediately so he just avoid this exchange the problem is after knight d5 he just resigned and he resigned because rook to c3 is coming and most of the players probably would would continue the game however he was so disappointed of his of his game that um, that he just resigned now how to stop that how to stop that um, the rook to c3 and the knight um, c7 is coming and you cannot do anything about that maybe knight c5 however rook c3 is still on the board uh, now b4 is coming so a5 a3 a4 uh, and after exchanging you know b4 is still on the board uh, 
queen d7 doesn't work because it's free piece it, it of course cannot be taken because now this is the fork uh, and if the knight is taken the queen is gone so that's not possible queen a6 this would be very complicated so nepo should try because that that actually is a uh, pretty fancy knight c7 it looks like you know uh black actually are, are lost however look at this queen a5 with the attack on the knight on the rook and if white play something like b4 attacking the queen and the and the knight then the queen of course can can pick up the knight so uh white would be forced to play actually knight to d5 which is the best move in the position protecting the 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 rook also b4 is the very serious threat now so queen d8 and after b4 and um, and moving the knight to d7 knight c7 is still on the board winning the exchange um and the game so uh, this is why Nepo actually resigned. There are probably no other uh, ways to continue the game. As, at least I don't see maybe something like knight e5, but but still rook c3. If the queen tries to to escape, then then again knight c7, and it's just winning the exchange. Even if some complications, you know, like like rook c8, uh, taking the rook, taking the rook, and after knight g7, let's say rook g3. Uh, let's say bishop g3 bishop g7 uh, and the game can continue however as you see uh, white are up the exchange and two pawns so so definitely that's enough um, to win so congratulations to magnus Carlsen. and i would like to just uh, show you all the charts here so as you see magnus Carlsen easily won against peter Fiedler. Uh, this was also the topic because jan nepomniashi had a much more difficult uh, semi-finals he couldn't rest like Magnus Carlsen one extra days but yeah this 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 is chess and in the final Magnus Carlsen managed to win a 2-0 uh, so he didn't need the, the third game and uh, and that was his third win in this uh, Magnus Carlsen chess tour tournaments the series of four tournaments uh, Magnus Carlsen won three of them uh, and we're gonna have one more with 300,000 total prize fund in the Kiva finals where Magnus Carlsen gonna compete with Daniel Dubov, uh, Hikaru Nakamura and Dink Liren. Um, so good luck for all of the players. I think they're gonna start in a couple of days. And um, and yeah, if you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss another games from Kiva finals and other, I think I'm gonna show a couple of games of the of the engines, maybe some of the Rubinstein. Uh, games we will see uh press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one